What's going on guys and welcome to the walkthrough of the prison from the ARC movie. I would recommend checking out the ARC movie of course if you haven't already seen it before this walkthrough because there are going to be many many spoilers. The ARC movie was posted yesterday. You guys can find that link in the description down below and uh, I cannot stress enough do not watch this before the movie. I can't so I woke up in a prison cell this is the prison that spent, uh, took about nine hours for Daxwern to build. And I wanted to show it off to all of you guys and kind of give you some behind the scenes action of the movie and explain some cool things. Um, if you also want to check out the bloopers and miss that video, there was a bunch of funny bloopers from the movie. So, of course, like I said, this prison took nine hours to build, which is an insane amount of time, of course. Um, a lot, a lot of time from Dax himself, and, uh, the entire movie was shot on the premise of this, uh, building, of course, the uh, episode one, Prison Break, but first, I also can show you a little bit more behind the scenes, there was a house down here that was actually used for the extras to respawn, as you see right here, a uh, little thing that you guys probably didn't see behind the scenes, I don't know what this is, I guess it's a... Is it just access to... Yeah, so this is just inventory room that they put down uh, for prisoners. Uh, so that way they could grab some more gear and come back if they died. And, uh, of course, they just kind of made it a little bit more homey. But that is actually where the prisoners respawned after they died in any of the shotgun scenes or any of the turret scenes or any of the scenes like that. Um, a lot of bloopers did happen in a lot of these scenes and we had to have them respawn quite often. So that's why we set that bunk bed up down there just to make it a little bit easier. Um, one thing I don't know if you guys noticed in the movie, there was actually a, uh, a ghillie suit man in a bush right here, right in the beginning of the movie. If you guys saw that part, please let me know. That's just kind of like some funny bloopers that we, uh, threw in there, really bloopers, Easter eggs more or less, uh, that we threw in there so that you guys could kind of, like, if you look around in the movie, you're actually going to see a lot of random funny things in the background. Um, the ghillie suit man being here actually was really important to the story. He was the one that hid here and actually did the three explosions on the front door to blow in. He was a crucial part of the story, the ghillie suit man right there that worked for the resistance. Um, so just a little funny thing if you guys want to go back and watch the movie and see that portion. It's right in the beginning. It's pretty simple. It was kind of just a little funny thing that we decided to add. So this is the staging area, of course. There's absolutely nothing in these bins. Uh, we have some people sleeping around. Obviously, these are some extras in the movie. Like, we have Oliver, Renity, Deathlock, Grizzly, someone up here, Soup King. You'll see a lot of dead bodies floating around as we go. Um, but this is just the staging area. Boss shotgunned the prisoner, Grizzly, who actually... Actually, it was Beans. Beans got shot, and he fell back here. And, uh, yeah, this is just kind of the staging area. Uh, this is actually, at, towards the end of the movie, you saw me and Boomer split up, and Boomer went up there to jump on the turret. This is a fully functioning, like, scenario. Like, this place is not, you know, like, baloney. It's not a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes. Like, this is literally a prison that he built. Like, these actually, you climb up these, and you do get up here, which does hop in, and you can shoot the prisoners that are running away. So, um, we've sped up times on the server, so it's gonna be nighttime, daytime pretty quickly here um but yeah so it's like a fully functioning building it's not just like a whole bunch of charade of just like walls and stuff behind you you know what i mean it is a full functioning base if you wanted to live in it uh there's a bunch of different rooms we didn't show you we actually have observation rooms these observation rooms are actually windows so in the interrogation scene which was in interrogation one i believe right here so this is where we were actually interrogating, and these windows here can actually be viewed from observation rooms. So look, you can see right here. Um, we thought it'd be cool if, you know, people thought Warden was maybe standing back here and observing the new prisoners. Like, he kind of has this vibe about him that uh, gives him, like, this kind of secrecy that he kind of just chills in his little hut and does his own thing in his office, which we'll get to later. But also he has a lot of these windows to observe prisoners and people and how they're reacting and whatnot. You also saw an example of those see-through windows here when we actually saw the tattoos on John right there in the center. So a really cool thing. This is another yard entrance. You saw me and Boomer take this one actually uh, after the shooting gun scene in the main prison hall. This is the main prison hall area. Again, this is where Haunch got shot. This is where the couple of prisoners beating up on the guard got shot. This is where we yelled at him to get back in here. 
Uh, here's John Cell, one of the biggest and most open-ended positions of the entire movie. John has a huge part in this entire 10 to 12 part movie series. You guys will see that obviously in the future. Again, no spoilers as much as I possibly can for future episodes. All of these prison cells are fully functioning, doors open, they have bunk beds, toilets, chairs, literally like everything. Um, some of them obviously don't have cages, it's just the way that they were positioned. John's happened to be one that also didn't have a cage. Um, that actually had to do with the, part of the fact that uh, we gave him that cell because it was the nice new one and John was a good prisoner. And of course, um, we didn't have vision on him, so none of, the, none of the guards saw what he was doing because there was no cage. Just kind of behind the scenes action right there. So um, another door that leads to the yard, which is uh, pretty crazy. We'll get to that later. And of course, more cells and they all go up and around and there's some windows watching outside. This is actually visible from the outside in the yard, I'm pretty sure, or am I mistaken? Let me double check. No, 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 so that's an observation room that I'll show you guys here in just a second. So this is actually the restricted area. This is the guards quarters, quote unquote, that you can go into. Um, this is the staff area where the episode began, the armory in which it got blown into. Unfortunately, I can't show you the cool armory setup because it got blown up. Um, but this is the observation room, also got slightly blown up, but these windows, like you can see, guards would sit in here and make sure that any prisoners that were trying to get through these double doors would not be able to because they can see what was going on in the yard. They can see what's going on in here. It's just a little bit better vision for the guards. So um, this main area leads out into another armory. And then, of course, you guys saw, spoiler alert, at the end of the movie, this is where we got into the vault cage um, or the uh, sorry, the tech cage or the tech vault, that is, and this is kind of foreshadowing into the next episode, which I'm not going to explain. You just guys are gonna have to try to figure it out on your own. More towers that actually do go up. This goes all the way around the prison. All of these ladders can be climbed. I think this one is the easiest one to climb. Yeah, these all look out. All of the lights flashing out in the distance. All of it lit up at night automatically. There are tech generators hidden in some of these towers along the way to make them run permanently. Um, that kind of cool stuff just kind of hidden within the prison. So if we come this way, we go to the warden's office, which is my easily my favorite part of this entire build, the warden's office. Um, it really, really does match uh, what you would expect like a warden's office to look like. Like it's very uppity. It's very kind of powerful. This is another behind the scenes thing. You guys didn't actually see this in the movie. We were repairing some armors that had gotten broken. Um, amongst some of the shooting scenes. So this is the warden's office. Um, we actually had a plan that we were gonna put a ghillie man in this bush as well, but it didn't really fit the story very well. And uh, it was kind of obvious as well, but that would have been pretty funny, wouldn't it? Um, so this is the warden's chair, of course. This is where he was sitting. Chris Delish, the warden. Uh, he got up and then brought us around back down here. So, so yeah, very, very warden-esque. You know, he's got the bonsai trees, very feng shui, you know, like very rich. Uh, this is actually a glass ceiling. It's not just closed off. If you go from above, it is glass. Uh, these are also glass. See if they're from both sides. Uh, there's some viewing galleries on the sides here as well. And then obviously leading down to his favorite little pet cages. And uh, the overview of the nice river that he built himself on with this prison. Really cool. And you get an idea of the glass windows up there with this. And you can kind of get the scale of the prison as well, which is really really cool so like i said this took them eight to nine hours the next builds are not going to be as crazy but still pretty crazy i don't even know what's up there hmm. weird um but they're going to be some pretty crazy builds of course we have the yard here the quetzal in question that was used as the resistance we have dax the builder right there we actually have chris delish we have boomer and another extra zombie who also played uh john a little bit for us so, uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, the three explosions obviously were there, John's house and the front door. The front door did blow into this hole, which actually was rather convenient for a lot of the flow of the movie. Of course, you guys saw us come through this here door here and then swing around to this hole. Luckily, we were able to just jump up here and then Boomer could get to his shooting position where he mowed down all the prisoners. Also, as a behind-the-scenes thing, uh, there was literally... Christian standing on top of this directing when the prisoner should run out off obviously off the camera's angle and that allowed us to functionally have 
the prisoners run out of the prison and get shot. It was really kind of like a fun system. A lot of the scenes, as you saw, were like 30 seconds to a minute long, and each scene took about an hour apiece. Um, and I believe there was 14 scenes. Some of them obviously flowed a little bit better and were very easy one-takers, and some of them did have a lot of work. So the movie did take 40 to 50 hours combined with the building, the filming, the editing, the music, the everything. Um, it was a lot, a lot of work, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. But that was just a little behind-the-scenes walkthrough of the mega build that is the prison. There are bloopers and behind-the-scenes videos as well if you guys are really interested in that type of stuff and you really like the movie and you want to see more of what happened, some funny stuff, some behind-the-scenes of how things worked, building and crafting and exploring. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that you guys are uh, enjoying the Stark movie stuff. Peace out.